is Gretchen Johnson. I teach at Cleveland Elementary and I teach physical education class. I'm Stephanie Haynes. I teach at George McGovern Middle School in the Middle School Immersion Center and I teach reading and language arts. My name is Lenny Davis and I teach K-5 vocal music at Garfield Challenge Center. I'm Lynn Thomason and I work at Lincoln High School. I teach Latin and then I also work with the online English classes in the Learning Center. I'm Dar Steenholt. I get to teach at the CTE Academy and I'm the Human Services Instructor here. I'm Allison Terhorst and I teach at Washington High School. I teach Psych 1, Psychology 2, and Advanced Placement Psychology. I actually talk to the classroom teachers at each level and try to get one thing that they're doing incorporated into movement and PE. Um, they tend to grasp it more if they're learning it in more than one place. And then with movement, it can kind of sink in a little bit more for certain kids. And then having it just twice a day is better than once a day. I like to be able to know each child. Very hard, but if I am outside at recess duty or outside in the hallway, I like to say hi to them and make sure that they're having a good day. If they're down and out, I try to give them a hug or, you know, let's, let's try a next step. What can we do better? I believe, though, if you have that relationship with that child, you're going to be able to do more things, um, teach them more, and then sometimes kids will follow other kids and, you know, I want to do this. And, they just enjoy behaving well. Yes, I get extra kids throughout the day. They earn it or they um, come and help. They use their points to come see me. Um, sometimes they just need a break and they come in and hang out. It's, and it also helps me with little kids because then they're a role model and they like to do that too. This was my ideal job. I was so blessed to get it right out of the chute, but this is what I wanted to do from the start. A lot of our kids are refugees, which means that they come from systemic trauma, um, which is really hard. You know, they're 11, 12, 13 years old, and they've seen things in their lives that no child that age should have to deal with. And so they do sometimes come with some, some emotional baggage and some really difficult situations, and, and that's the part where they just really need to be met with a lot of grace and love. Um, but that is probably the most difficult part, is something we can't even control is their, their history and their past. Being in refugee camps or living through wars is, it's, it's quite challenging. I grew up in a very diverse neighborhood, and so that was kind of comfortable for me. I feel very comfortable among people who are different. Um, and then I did my student teaching in Tanzania, and I was the language learner there, and so um, I just felt a passion for kids going through that situation of not knowing the language and trying to still learn. And so um, that really solidified it for me that this was the path that I wanted to follow. I love Latin because it makes sense of everything. It tells me why there's QED in geometry. It tells me why there's AU as the symbol for gold in chemistry. It tells me how we get the concept of democracy. Uh, it tells me about art and sculpture and architecture and astronomy and history and politics and theology and philosophy. And so when a student gets the connection and you can see it in their face because their eyes light up and their whole entire face lights up, that's the best part of the day, especially if a student has struggled to get that connection and then they, they persevere and they get it. That's really the best. We used to hear about reading, writing, and arithmetic. And now we hear about relevance, rigor, and relationships. And we have very solid data to show us that if the rigor's there and the relevance is there, but the relationship isn't there, that it has a very negative impact on student success. So as a teacher, why would I not spend a ton of my energy and a ton of my time into that R, that relationship R, that I know is going to have the biggest impact on my student's success? And I think it's important also to realize that uh, you have to believe in yourself first as a teacher that you are capable of growing and improving. Um, you have to believe that that growth mindset works for adults as well. And if you believe in yourself and that you, you improve your instructional practice and, and you can get better, then I think then you can come, I come every day believing that my students are capable of that as well. One of my big picture goals is that I create students that are independent of me. I think at the end of their fifth grade year, if they can say, Mr. Davis, we've got this, I don't need you anymore, then I feel like that I've done my job. Where they're able to really take responsibility, 
take charge of their learning. So I like to kind of captivate my students. I like for them to um, really take pride in what they do and really be excited about coming to music. So we do a variety of different, different ways of, of learning about music. My students know that I have two expectations. Do your best, make me proud. When we go on a field trip, all I have to do is stand up in the bus and they said, we know, we know, make you proud, do our best. And so when we go shadowing or whatever we do, I'll just repeat that and they know they're kind of my standard rules. But I also enjoy telling the students, I learn something every day and it's usually them that, that teach it to me. And quite often, um, I'll announce it to them. I didn't know that. Thanks for sharing. I'll remember that. That's one of the things I'll probably learn today. And um, if I make a mistake, which I often do, you know, I can tell the students it won't be the last mistake I made, and it sur surely wasn't the first, but it, it might have been the first today, you know. So I guess having fun with the kids is really, really important. I guess one of the biggest goals we thought is you got to find what makes you happy. If not, it's going to be a long 86,000 hours in your work life. I really want them to be engaged. I just want them to, it's really hard for me, and I think every teacher has this, where you go home and you think, they were bored with that lesson, or they didn't, they didn't like that lesson. But if you see, like, the spark, um, that you ignited something that they're interested in, uh, it makes, that's what makes you come back for more, I think. Teaching is a profession that um, a lot of times in the general population is maybe looked down upon lately as, oh, well, they get three months off or they complain too much. But I love what I do. I don't view this as a job, but I view this as something that I get to come to every day and be a part of, something that I'm a part of. And so with all that negativity aside, I, um, there isn't a place that I'd rather be than here, doing exactly what I'm doing, teaching exactly what I'm teaching. I would say working with coworkers is a huge part of a VR comfort zone, your success, your happiness as a teacher, and I do enjoy the smaller camaraderie of a school such as this. And we tend to intermingle because we've got students that we're trying to find a path for them. And so it's just really fun to work together with all of the different areas. I think first and foremost that you have a love for students, that you really care about others, and. Uh, I feel like uh, working hard in your job, being nice and working hard. Whatever their potential is, I just hope they can reach for the stars and, and get to that potential. These kids are our hope. You know, we, we need them to solve problems. Uh, we need them to make the world a better place. Uh, we need them and their skills and their knowledge and their technical expertise and all the tools that they have. We need, we need these students to put all that to good use. Uh, and so I just see that hope and that potential every day when I look out into the classroom. I think once people spend time in my room, they see why it's so rewarding. I mean, my kids have such a joy of, for learning. I don't have to convince them that education is a good thing. They're all very excited to learn, and I think that that is just so refreshing and really every teacher's dream. So if we have to get around a language barrier, then we get around a language barrier. But to have a classroom of kids who love learning is just really a special thing. All those hugs I get keeps me coming back because I know that they need someone and I like um, being able to give back to them and show them that they can do whatever they want to do in life. It is a great job. I love it and wouldn't change it for the world. Mm -hmm.